out there in internet land. Um, as everyone else uh, catches up to, to all of you who are on time, um, just going to go over how, uh, how tonight's going to go. Uh, so you'll notice uh, that you can see and hear uh, all of us uh, on screen, um, but we will not be able to see or hear you. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't communicate with us. Uh, you'll see um, on the bottom of your, uh, of your Zoom window, uh, there's a little icon called chat. And if you open that up, you can type in comments um, or questions or just say hi. Uh, and we'll be able to, uh, to know that you're here and you can chat with maybe other people um, who are watching. Uh, or if you have uh, questions about the sound or video, that's where you can leave those. Uh, and then uh, later on, uh, towards the end, uh, if we have enough time, uh, we'll be able to take some questions from you. Uh, and to do that, uh, there's another icon on the bottom of your screen um, that says Q&A. Uh, so that's where you would type those questions for our wonderful panelists. Uh, and we'll remind you uh, later on uh, to do that if you, if you do have any questions. Uh, so I suppose, uh, yeah, I guess we can kick things off. So welcome. Thank you everyone for showing up. Uh, it's great that you're all here. We have a, a great night uh, about talking about art plan, talking about plein air, and we'll talk a bit about what that means uh, for those of you who maybe don't know. Uh, so before we get started, um, it's uh, important that we uh, recognize and, uh, and be thankful that the, the lands on which we gather for cultural activities uh, are part of the territories and unceded lands of the Coast Salish peoples uh, of the, in West Vancouver. It's the Squamish and the tsleil peoples, and we are ever so grateful uh, as guests to be able to be there uh, on those beautiful lands with all those mountains and trees and the seashore. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about those lands as well because that factors into, uh, into plein air painting. Uh, I will be your host this evening. My name is Steven Snyder. I am the Gallery and Communications Coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Arts Council. We're a not-for-profit uh, organization that advocates for and fosters and promotes the arts in West Vancouver. Uh, and our co-host this evening will be Taryn Urquhart from the West Vancouver Memorial Library. And uh, Taryn will be monitoring the chat, so uh, she'll be the one answering any of your questions or anything there. Uh, so now uh, let's turn things over to Bryce, uh, Bryce Tupper from British Pacific Properties. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks a lot. Hi, everybody. Great afternoon to talk about art, I guess it could be true for most days. But uh, yeah, my name is Bryce Tupper. I'm the Vice President of Planning and Development with British Pacific Properties. And we're extremely happy to be back again this year in the face of kind of all the adversity to help sponsor Paint on the Mountain again on the slopes of Hollyburn Mountain, which is at the future uh, uh, site of uh, our, our next mixed use community, Cypress Village. And we wanted to capture the, the natu natural beauty of the area uh, in art, and uh, it's, it's our fifth year doing it, and uh, I, I took a look at uh, all the art of the 12 artists uh, on Monday, and, and again today on Bellevue Avenue, and it's amazing. I think uh, the, the bar keeps getting higher and higher, so it's amazing. I encourage everyone to take a look at it. Of course, the event couldn't be possible without the help of a lot of people. Uh, you know, I want to first thank the artists for participating days out in the heat. It was a hot weekend, wasn't it, last weekend? So they earned, earned every stroke for sure. Um, so thanks to the artists. Uh, we had some jurors that stepped up and helped us. Bobby Burgers, Lori Goldberg, who I think is on the panel today, and, uh, and Martin Kemble. So thanks to the jurors. We couldn't have pulled it off without Ruth Payne, our uh, art consultant. She keeps everyone in line, uh, keeps it straight, gets things done. Thank you so much, Ruth. And of course, uh, I mentioned that the art currently is uh, along Bellevue Avenue between 15th and 14th Avenue, 14th and 15th Avenue, exhibited in the storefront. So uh, Maureen O'Brien of the Ambleside Dundere Business Improvement Association helped pull that together with a lot of the shop owners there. And you can walk down there, 24 awesome plein air paintings exhibited there. You can purchase them, some awesome deals, beautiful paintings. So I encourage you to, to after the art talk, do a bit of an art walk and check that out. Um, and again, thanks to Silk Purse for, uh, for hosting our talks and, 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 and talking and getting exposure to plein air. So I guess with that, um, it's my job to kick this off a bit with the announcement of the winners of this year's uh, Paint on the Mountain 
plan our art competition. And uh, I'll start with the uh, second honorable mention is Sonora Singh with a, a piece of art um, that is titled BPP2. So dear to my heart, the name. I think it was the second of the first, second of the two paintings that he did. Uh, so thanks, Sonora. A beautiful, beautiful piece. So congratulations on that. Uh, the first honorable mention uh, goes to uh, someone familiar with the competition. It's not this one, I don't believe. It is the other one. It is Shirley Williams, Enter the Light. So congratulations, Shirley. I think she's been a participant for the last five years. So amazing work as always. Uh, it's beautiful. And the grand prize winner this year, 2020, Hang on the Mountain, Plan Our Art Competition, Maria Joseph Hans for Shadow Play. So congratula congratulations to Maria. Uh, again, she's participated every year and always delivers amazing art and uh, always look forward to the products from all the artists this year. And so again, like I said, go take a look along Bellevue. It's, it's pretty beautiful. Uh, but now I'll, I'll kick it back to you, Stephen, and I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thanks for that, Bryce. And yes, congratulations, artists. That was wonderful. It's great to see your work. All right. Uh, so I guess it's probably a great time to uh, introduce the rest of our panel. Uh, let's start with, uh, with our artists. So uh, let's go with uh, Marie, if you want to introduce yourself and say a little bit about you and uh, your artistic past, I suppose, and career. Sure. Um, so I'm, I have a studio here in North Vancouver. That's where I am right now. And um, I've been working in plein air for about 15 years. And uh, before that, I've just been painting and photographing uh, pretty much my whole life. So uh, being outdoors and landscape is like my number one, uh, my number one subject matter. It doesn't matter whether I'm painting or photographing. It's, it's, it's what I do. So, um, so it's very, uh, easy for me to make that jump to being like in this paint on the mountain event, which is exactly why I apply to be a part of it and want to be a part of it again, hopefully uh, in years to come. But yeah, it's 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 just wonderful. And I paint in oil and not sure what else uh, I can throw in there. If you have any other questions um, that, I, that you think I could answer directly, that'd be great. That's great. Awesome. And then well, Shirley, let's introduce yourself. Hi, um, my name is Shirley Williams. Uh, I came to painting through a career in interior design. I graduated from BCIT many moons ago, 43 years to be specific, um, where I learned to draft and render. So I was able to uh, hone my drawing skills in, throughout my career. This was pre-computer aided drafting. So I really had to learn how to make the scene look believable. So um, I credit a lot of the ability that I have or that I've been able to count, um, draw from now on that experience. And um, as well as that, I've been working with kids and community programs for uh, 30 years. Um, I left interior design about 13 years ago and have been painting en plein air for maybe nine, eight, nine years. And uh, I'm loving it. It's a, it's a natural transition for me. I love to paint from life, um, whether I'm painting bouquets of flowers and from my, uh, from my garden, in my studio, or out in the field. I, I love to have that connection with the, with the live, with life, the live object. Yeah, I love That's it. wonderful. Excellent. <laughs> we gotta love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And Sunur, if you could introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, so hi, everyone. My name is Sunur Singh. And I came here in Canada last uh, September. Um, I'm in my first year of college. And I uh, roughly saying I, I kind of started uh, drawing and painting in sixth grade. So uh, I, I, I was fortunate to have like good mentors and, and people who guided me. So, and, and I started doing live painting almost uh, three to four years ago. And I, I'm, I'm still learning and still trying to improve uh, my skills. And, and like, it's, it's so inspiration, it's inspirational to meet all, all these really amazing artists 
So it's and and it's been a really great experience uh, for me painting plein air. Awesome, that's great. Uh, and now let's move on to Lori Goldberg, who's here as one of the jurors for the competition. And Lori's also an artist. Yeah, so welcome, Lori. If you could introduce yourself a bit. Well, thank you very much for um, inviting me to be part of all this, and congratulations, everyone. Uh, so I, I'm a, a visual artist, painter in particular. Uh, I've been painting, I don't know, I guess since I was born. <laughs> I think I ate the paint first and then <laughs> we started moving it around. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of known for my large semi-abstract, it's a bit West Coast imagery, um, uh, but I usually just oppose it with something to disrupt it. <laughs> so kind of take something that's beautiful and, and, and change it. Uh, uh, so I'm, my work is diverse and it um, also, you know, I explore the object and kind of, uh, the, and, and, it, and see all the different types of um, ways of exploring that with the landscape. I'm also an educator. I've been teaching as long as I've been painting and uh, I guess I'm known mostly for teaching at Emily Carr for the last 20 odd years uh, in continuing education. And I guess that's it for me. Cool. Well, thank you everyone for being here tonight. So as we talked a little bit about it earlier, um, Paint on a Mountain is a plein air uh, painting competition. And for those of you uh, who maybe aren't familiar with what plein air is, um, it pretty much means just to paint outside painting in your natural surroundings. Uh, and it's something that uh, uh, what we know as plein air today is uh, fairly recent, actually, um, kind of around the 1800s um, in Europe was one of the first times that uh, painters were able to uh, carry their work with them because paint was now available in tubes. You know, they didn't have to stay in their studios, um, you know, big gallons of paint or blocks of paint. They could just take their uh, a portable easel and some tubes and they could go out into the landscape around them and paint what they saw. And, uh, and that's exactly what these amazing artists uh, did this past weekend was they went up to Hollyburn Mountain and sat themselves down and, and painted away and painted what they saw. So that's what plein air is. And that kind of leads into uh, our first uh, question of the evening. Um, why do you paint plein air? Uh, what's what's the draw of it for you as artists? Uh, let's start with Sonor. Okay, so for me, plein air painting is like uh, it's it's really it's um, different from being painting from an image. And when I'm painting outdoors, it's uh, it's like I'm looking at the subject or the landscape in the real life, and I can see the colors and experience the environment and atmosphere more. Um, I'd, I'd say more like precisely, or I can capture it uh, in a better way. So, so I guess that's why I love plein air painting. And it's also, it's also like a good experience being out in the nature instead of, um, you know, uh, like a square a room or a studio, I guess, I guess that, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Shirley, why, why do you paint plein air? Oh yeah, all of the above for sure. <laughs> it's definitely an excuse to get out. And there's almost always a little adventure attached to it. Something happens or it's, <laughs> it, it just, it's a fabulous excuse to be outside. Um, but mainly I enjoy having the opportunity to connect on a deeper level than I would be able to with a photo reference. And, um, it energizes me, I'm gonna say. I, having that direct connection, it goes straight to the heart. And um, it, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm the happiest when I'm out there. I, I really and truly love it. Hey, and Maria, why do you do it? Um, for all of the reasons they just <laughs> do, gotta say that. And it, and it is certainly true, I, Shirley and I actually um, ping together um, quite a bit, and it, and she when she says she's the happiest outside, it is true. She's she's like crazy happy outside. So, um, but I, I would say, and one of my main reasons for going outdoors is like um, is the idea of direct observation. And like as we we all know, like 
painting from a photograph, like or the photograph never seems to really replicate exactly what we see. Like if we were standing there looking at a sunset, right? And we take a picture and like at that time, it was like, that doesn't look like the sunset I'm looking at right now, right? So it's that idea that, you know, you're out there and you're um, directly observing those colors as your eye takes it in right then. And that's something that um, becomes really important when I come to the studio to make bigger paintings. So now I can actually take my photo reference and really turn them into paintings about really being back in that place. So I only ever really work from my own references for that reason, because I can't really relate to someone else's picture of a place. Um, so, so yeah, it really, for me, is, is about that direct observation. And I am like, I, I just love nature. I love mountains in particular and, and the coast. So I actually live in the perfect place to do what I do. Um, so yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty happy when I'm outdoors. It's just that whole, as Sunor really touched on, that, that, you know, that sensory experience of being outdoors. It's, you know, I mean, there's all these distractions that suddenly come in that we don't get when we're in the studio, right? Like, you know, the wind is gonna knock everything over or it's boiling, boiling hot like it was this past weekend. Um, whatever it is, like, you know, those things affect, I, I believe those really affect what our overall painting turns out like. Um, whether it's something um, specific or not in the painting, it's really, it's probably going to be related in some way to someone's response to the paintings that we make. So, um, so everyone probably feels really hot when they look at our paintings because <laughs> it was boiling hot when we were painting them. But yeah, so yes, love being outside. That's my thing. Thank you. It's also hard to appreciate how quickly light changes. That's right. Yeah. Unless you're out there and you are faced with it. Because mm -hmm. I think technically it changes every 15 minutes. And especially if you're in a sunny environment, like we were on the weekend. Thank heavens it was sunny. But it just makes <laughs> for a more challenging situation. And you naturally rise to the challenge and uh, connect yourself to it and work with it. And you have to be fast and think smart and make sketches. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite the experience. It's great. That's, uh, that leads me to one of our next questions. Um, were there any obstacles that popped up on you this weekend that you were not prepared for that you had to sort of overcome? <sighs> Anyone feel free to, to jump in. I'm going to say that I was prepared because I brought the bear spray. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, what you mentioned. I brought the bear spray, but I didn't actually have the nerve to look at the bear that was right around the corner from us. Maria spotted him. She goes, oh, look, there's a bear. Shh. But I wouldn't know. I'm a chicken. <laughs> she made me carry the bear spray. I did. <laughs> because I had to show her how to use it to like, Click That's off the, the, the end cap and like, you know, read the directions that are like tiny, yeah, tiny, tiny, yeah. but yeah. Like it, the, the bears were definitely as interested in the berries as we were. So we did a lot of like berry eating as well. <laughs> and I tend to trip a lot on the job. So <laughs> I'm going to say that there were rocks in the wrong place for me. So that was <laughs> an unexpected issue that I had to deal with. Yeah. yeah. I, I just want to interrupt. I'll just uh, uh, just say something because when we were, I asked Ruth. I said, "Did they see any wildlife?" And they said, "Well, I think that we saw some deers, but I don't know if they actually saw them." But they didn't know. She didn't know that you guys had seen a bear. That's really interesting. And I think, I think there were a lot. I think. There oh were yeah, a lot. yeah. So I know that. Um, like I think it was. Um, Oh, shoot. Uh, well, I told Maureen about the bear because it was just up from where she was painting. And then a bunch of people, a um, bunch of painters were coming down from uh, that viewpoint in the first route in. And they had, they had definitely seen the bears and, and had, and we'll see, and, um, and uh, Elizabeth Austin. I think they had both seen the bear up, uh, a different bear, because there were there was lots of scat everywhere, so it was like, mm, there's an awful lot here. Maybe I won't paint there, but um, so does yeah. That, does that factor in when you're painting outdoors, like the fear factor of what's behind you? Or what's and, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, I tend to make, uh, I take my paintbrush and like knock my uh, tripod often just to like make noise because 
it's a really interesting thing how, you know, you, you forget, you know, you're, you're into your painting and all of a sudden you realize that you're being like really, really quiet. And, you know, so if a bear comes around, they're not, they're not really interested in you, but they're, but they don't even know you're there. So, you know, it's good to just like make noise and so that they remember you're there, right? And go somewhere else to go eat and munch and whatever they do. That's the factor that people have to know what it takes the courage to go out into the forest. So Nur, you're new to this country. I don't know if you knew that or not, but. That's yeah. right. That, yeah, yeah Ma Maria told me about bears. And <laughs> surely we were talking about like uh, the bears could come. I was like, yeah. <laughs> but but similar to that in India, like I'm from a place, a region, like I'm from Punjab, uh, which is a very hot region. And we have snakes there. So when I used to go like out painting, so it, in, in fields uh, or in um, like farms, so there was always a danger that uh, I'm quiet, I'm painting, that there could be a snake crawling around. And if I step on it or something, uh, that was pretty dangerous. And there are many other like uh, poisonous creatures too, which are which move, like crawl around. So, so yeah, but still, I, I never knew that there were bears around. <laughs> I also saw a garter snake. That's the other thing. You did? Uh, that was you it. Have, yeah. You have I, was in PC? I didn't know that. It's just a garter snake. So see, so no, you're quite lucky. Like we don't have the poisonous snakes that you have. So yeah. I, I would rather be in bear country than your snake country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, since you've all um, been sharing your experiences with each other um, uh, while you're out in the competition, um, uh, how much interaction while you were painting did you actually have with the other artists and what was sort of the the atmosphere on site like between all of you? I would I would say it was great. Um, I didn't get to see everyone but luckily um, one painting I was doing was kind of out in a very like easily passable area so I did get to um, talk to people because they were like going by sort of thing so that, that was really nice. Everyone, I, I find like in events like this, everyone's just always really helpful. Like how, you know, no, people are gonna say like, oh yeah, if you want, you know, a nice water view or whatever, you know, go over that way or whatever it is. So, um, so yeah, it was really nice. And I know that like Anne and I had a nice conversation just about how great this event was because both of us know about so many events that happen like this um, in the US that are like nice big events. and. It's so good to have one that's feeling a little more similar to that up here because there really aren't any. So, but yeah, I had a nice time with people. I did as well. It's, uh, I, I find it a really friendly environment. I'm encouraged by it. I think it's, uh, it's nice to know that there's people in, in, even though I can't, I don't have a visual connection to them or necessarily an auditory connection. I know they're out there. We're not the only ones, me and the bears. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, people are so generous. I, I think it's a lovely environment, it really is. And it's such a pleasure to meet new people. This guy in particular. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same, same oh, here. Yeah. Same here, like it, it, it was just wonderful. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I mean, uh, an event where it's like uh, you get the person to go out and it's it's not just like a gathering or it's a it's a like an organized event that there's paintings and then you submit them and then you hang them and uh because i've not participated in many events like this and people were just amazing like and uh we were meeting new artists and i me I, w I was just around Shirley and Maria all the time. Like they were, uh, <laughs> they were painting on the spots, and I was very close to them where I was painting. So, so once in a while, I was checking like what's the progress or or <laughs> talking nonsense and disturbing them. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was wonderful, yeah. Uh, and even even the organizers, like who uh, people who were present there from British properties, they were really nice and. Yeah, courteous and pretty good yeah wonderful experience for sure so there's a there's someone in your painting sonor so who's that 
Uh, so which painting? Uh, the one that we uh, that we showed um, that That's one. Shirley. Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Shirley. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, she, she was painting uh, ahead of me, like on uh, on the same road, and I was a little behind on that road. So so she were into the scene. And I and it, it, it's really great to like have a subject matter who was Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> so while you're out there painting with everyone and you're getting along, it's it's still a it's still a competition, you know. So does that really factor in, or or how do you prepare for that sort of aspect of of the day? Mm, didn't really affect me, I guess. I'm I'm I, I was <laughs> I I, I mm, like most of the time I was not thinking of that as of a competition. Yeah, it was just like enjoying the outside. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think I think that's true. You, you can't really, well, at least me, I, I can't really think about it as um, a competition because then I feel like I'm trying to make a painting to please someone other than myself, um, which um, some people are really good at, you know, but um, that's why I initially was trained as an illustrator, but I left illustration early on because I'm not good at that. I'm not good at like, making the painting that someone else wants. So, um, so yeah, I, I basically need to just for, sort of forget that or try, which is really hard, but try and forget like sort of the situation that you're in. And, and you know, and that's why I said it was really nice with all the people that I did, all the other artists that I did interact with because I felt like everyone was really asking about like, so how is your painting going? Like, did you, you know, and it's, sometimes you don't want to hear that the other person's already got like, two done, or I think Tatiana <laughs> said the first day that she had like three starts on the go. And I'm like, three starts, <laughs> whoa. So, um, but but it's really nice to know that, that like other people are like, you know, they're, they're out there just doing their thing too. So um, I have to say one of my favorite hashtags is um, just painting outside. That's like my, one of my Instagram hashtags. Cause that's, that's kind of how I feel is like, you just got to take like what you do and put yourself outside and do it. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, and just a reminder for everyone uh, watching, if you have any questions for any of our panelists, uh, you can type those into the uh, Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Lori, what was the jury looking for uh, for this event? Oh, well, there were a few categories and uh... I just want to first of all say that all the work that that I saw, and I would say that the other two jurors would say the same, is that they were all on high level. I mean, it was very difficult to to make choices of who would be the winners, but we were forced to do that. <laughs> we did. So whoever did not uh, get into the winning circle, please do not worry about that. And I'm sure you're not that you just carry on painting. You know, forget about that whole part. You know, which I, you're already telling me that you guys don't think about that when you're out there. It's your art and you just carry on anyways, you know, whatever, win or lose, it doesn't have anything to do with it. But it was really um, a, quite a, I, I enjoyed the process a lot to, to to analyze and construct my answers. And, you know, um, I have my own method, but, you know, I guess I could speak for myself, um, it would probably be the best, but I, overall, and I will in a sec, but overall, we're all looking for, um, you know, sense of place, you know, what that felt for all of us, and then, um, you know, the the technical uh, aspects of it, um, and, you know, the composition, and the uniqueness, or the originality, which, you know, within that genre, it's not, you know, there's a certain style that I think um, you can fall into, and I think that there is a lot of exploring that in, their, in everyone's own language, which I, I was really appreciative of. So, you know, by looking around, I mean, and I kind of worked, so for myself, I worked from, first of all, the intuitive, like, what, what's, my, what's my gut? What's my first, where do I go to? You know, where am I curious about? And I would go to those pieces and look at them, and then I would turn my back on them. And then we would go and have a conversation because we really needed to be distracted because it's really overwhelming. You know, room full of all the and then we'd come back again, and then we'd have um, our method. I don't know. Do you want me to share our method? Which 
you know, it doesn't matter. But anyways, we just had, you know, there had to be a consensus of three totally different art-related jurors to come together to make that choice. So it was not, uh, some of them came easy, some of them was, you know, whatever. It, 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 all, it all flowed so nice. Actually, it all flowed so nicely. It was a wonderful experience. And, um, yeah, and I just also wanted to say the images that you put up on the screen do not do justice to the work. The work is flat, you know, looking, the colors aren't, to, you know, as true, and also you really don't see the vibrancy of the life force that's in the artwork. So anyone that's seen them on the screen, you got to go see them in real life to really appreciate what um, what they look like and, and uh, experience. But, yeah, it was, you know, and it's always surprising. And, you know, Sunur was a real uh, treat because, you know, he's 19 years old from what I've been told, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so you're just at the beginning, and there's something really exciting about that. And your work is all very, very, um, you know, highly skilled as a watercolorist in particular. You know, one of the hardest mediums to work with because it's a one-directed medium. You know, you capture things in a really fresh, alive way. And, you know, and if you keep up your curiosity and, you know, inquiring personality that you have, your work will evolve and, and get stronger and, I'm excited to see where it will go in your future. So you got the whole future ahead of you. So that's exciting that, that you got. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, I could talk about the other two works too that uh, I found really attractive to what, you know, attracted me. With, um, Shirley's work, I felt like I could, um, I really felt place was a huge one for me for your work. I felt like I could just be right where you were. You, you drew me in to where the artist would be sitting. And you were so, immersed in the forest that's how it felt like i felt like i could not get out like you know i love the story of people that come from another part of the world and they go into the forest and they think they're going to go for a nice like happy hike and they realize that you know you don't do ha happy hikes in in the west coast forest you get lost really easily yeah true oh i think maybe we've lost Lori temporarily that's okay, I'm sure she'll pop back in. Uh, so we can move on to uh, maybe some of these. We've got a few questions from the audience already. Uh, so let's go to one. Uh, we've got Jan uh, wants to know, what do you take with you when you head out to paint? What are your supplies? What are your materials? Who wants to answer that one? Uh, well, I mean, there's a, it depends on your medium, but if you're doing, if you're doing oil, so I paint in oil, so that's going to probably be different, but um, yeah, if I paint in oil, I've got um, a tripod set up with, um, with actually a paint box that attach, it's built to attach to that tripod. And so um, there's a gazillion different kinds of setups out there. And I think the most important thing is to find the one that uh, you feel comfortable with because honestly, as we talked about, like painting outdoors, um, anything can happen. And so, um, and you can end up being like crazy uncomfortable, which is not going to make you want to go out and paint. So basically coming up with um, just, I'd, I'd search it out online, like all the different setups that you can get, but I personally have a Strata easel. That's my, my main go-to easel. So you can just go to like, S-T-R-A-D-A easel.com and, um, and take a look at theirs. Um, I love it, it's pretty indestructible because it's metal, but I've got, you know, everything I need, my paints, my brushes, my easel, my tripod. I'm sure I'll forget something because I always do and all my like paper towel and um, bear spray. Don't forget your bear spray and maybe your bug spray, big hat, you know, if you like to sit down, so. But whatever you do, make sure it's really, um, transportable because it, it if you want to go into a different place to paint it makes it it makes it really hard to like drag all your stuff in so i hope that helps a little bit yeah i say Sonor, Sonor, do you want to tell them about your setup since you did watercolor mm. yep sure i can uh, tell a little about uh watercolors i guess uh <laughs> Well, I won't talk about my setup because it's uh, not really good. I will talk about <laughs> a good setup. <laughs> so, like when you're doing watercolors, so you need uh, need uh, like easel 
which uh, which is like the surface of the easel could be uh, tapered uh, to your like requirement because watercolor is good when the water is flowing down and and if it's really really steep so water will flow down really easily and your color will not stand like right so you need that to be adjustable really quickly so when you need it to be adjusted and another thing is that uh, you can, uh, well, I, I like uh, to sit sometimes because I get tired and I cannot focus on my painting. So so I like my easel, I lower it down and sit on my stool, which is foldable and I carry it all the time. So, and that is also it. Another thing is I like to carry, and there's, I can show you here. Uh, I have right here. So I have this thing. Uh, I don't know what to call it. It's like a spray pump and you can uh, like spray water on your paper which will keep the color alive. So in, in when we are painting outdoors, it dries really quickly. So you need to keep the, to keep the surface uh, wet until you're done uh, your work or wet on wet, whatever you're doing. So yeah, I'm, and always like being comfortable with where you're sitting or standing is really important. Your surface must be all be uh, always in being shade. That's what I think. I always want it to be in shade. Mm. Sounds yeah. like a bit of a workout. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Do you bring a little table with you to set up supplies as well, like a folding table? A, a stool. A, um, it's fairly handy if, if you want to see. This, you, I, let's say. <laughs> and away he goes. Yeah, a little show and tell. This, like this tool. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do. Sometimes I keep my supplies on it. It's, it's accessible, cool. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got another question from the audience. This is uh, pretty interesting. Um, does your color palette change depending on if you are indoors or outdoors? Or do you still gravitate towards familiar colors that you would normally use in, in other paintings? I'll answer that one and then I'm going to pass it over to Maria, who's the color <laughs> expert. Um, I tend to use a pretty limited palette, meaning I don't put that many colors out onto my mixing palette. Um, and I tend to use the same ones in the studio as well. If I'm painting outside of the traditional landscape, uh, Hugh family, I will introduce um, colors that I wouldn't bother taking out into the field, like bright pinks or unusual oranges. But um, for the most part, I've got maybe six or seven colors that I take with me. Um, Maria? <laughs> Build on that. <laughs> yeah, she knows I'm a bit of a <laughs> color crazer. But um, Probably I should I should preface this by saying I'm quite fickle about color. Like, you know, things go in and out of fashion with me, like really fast as far as the color goes. But I mean, I generally have like my standard palette, um, which is like, um, a, you know, a set of about a warm and cool of each primary, basically. If that makes sense to people. Like, for example, you know, cadmium red light would be a warm red and alizarin permanent would be a cool red. So anyway, um, we can talk more about that later when we have like the five hour Zoom session. Um, but yeah, so it depends on where I'm at, um, what I think I'm going to paint, um, but I'll have like that basic set and then maybe I'll replace one or another. Uh, for example, like if you went to um, the desert Southwest and the skies there are definitely a different blue than we get here in BC. So sometimes it's nice to have to know that, oh yeah, I want to bring, you know, manganese blue here with me because that's going to really help me get to that sky color like a, that that blue that they have better than um than having to trying to mix it uh just for my standard palette or something like that but but generally speaking um it's nice to keep a plein air palette of colors the same because then if you bring that painting back and you're using it to make a bigger painting you know exactly what you use to make those colors so it can be, it can really help you out. Um, so as soon as you start adding those weird things, it can, it can really mess you up later, but you gotta make notes. I'm a, I'm a rather copious note taker sometimes. So, um, so yeah, I like to make notes about all my colors and 
I love color. So, yeah. That notion of making notes is interesting, um, Maria. Do, uh, do you artists find that um, uh, when you're painting on plein air, that's, that's kind of it? You know, you, you've, you've been out in the, in the wilderness, you've painted your piece and, and it's done. Or do you find that that's more of a, a warm up for maybe uh, a larger painting that you would then move into the studio? Do you ever use it that way? Well, well I'll answer that one um, real quick. Uh, is just that um, for me, like plein air painting has two, two purposes and um, they, they aren't mutually exclusive. However, like when I go out, a lot of times I'm thinking I just want to go out to get reference so I don't worry about making a painting. And then there are other times when I know like, you know, we're doing this event and I need to come out with like actually making a painting. And so, so those are kind of like two different things. However, the first one sometimes turns into a really good little painting. Right, so, um, so yeah, so I, I hope that isn't too confusing. <laughs> Not at all. That's a great question, by the way. Yeah. Impressed. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, do any of you have any, any, any tips uh, for aspiring uh, plein air artists? Do it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Do a little bit of homework up front. Talk to people that, that mm -hmm. work in, the, in the, the field, the medium. That's probably your, your first go-to would be to connect with someone that can take you along with them. And there's a lot of information out there, um, particularly south of the border. There's materials to be had that are beyond what we can get here in Canada. Um, but having said that, I think we're catching up, which is great. It's definitely the plein air movement is a lot stronger in the U.S. than it is here, um, which means that there are more options for materials and uh, Prashad boxes, which are what those little units are technically called. Um, but I highly recommend just doing it, as Maria says. But if you're feeling nervous, I think it helps to spend a little bit of time in the backyard getting to know your equipment. Even if you're a seasoned in-studio painter, I think it's helpful to just Give yourself a couple of hours and, well, a couple of hours, a couple of hours a day and get used to the scenario, get used to how it feels to be outside in the elements. And um, the uh, number one tip that I would have once you're out there is to not rush in. I find that um, most people like to do sketches beforehand and I, for some reason, I just don't work that way, but I do take my time when I'm in the field. I take my time connecting to the scenes that appeal to me and the chosen scene really has to connect on a, on a very deep level before I go in with it. But it can take me an hour and I've in the past spent too much time looking for the right thing and have not Taking it, taking it as seriously as maybe I could have. And now I just, I allow it to infuse me, I guess, is a, a good way of, of um, describing it. Um, that connection is really important to me. So don't rush it. And if that means you need to do multiple sketches to feel like uh, you're composing a scene that makes sense for you, that's phenomenal. I, I have great admiration for you pre-paint sketchers, but, um, but spending the time and connecting yourself is, is primary. Nice. So Noor, what do you do to prepare? Prepare? Yeah, find yourself some buddies. <laughs> like, I, I'm sorry, I didn't get like, to prepare a painting? No, or that... The, the, um, the plein air experience, what do you do to prepare? How do you find your, your chosen site or your chosen subject matter? You were very careful at it. I watched you. <laughs> I, I am, but I kind of don't want to be because uh, uh, <laughs> like there's, there's the uh, artist that I admire, uh, uh, Joseph Zubukvich, uh, who's a watercolor artist. And, uh, <laughs> And he, he says like there there are no bad subject matters, only bad paintings. So so I 
LeBron and Peyton you've seen and it, I want it to be good. But but yeah, I'm 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 kind of picky sometimes. Mm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So uh, I just wanted to remind everyone, um, Bryce had mentioned it earlier, um, but you can see all of the paintings that were created this past weekend uh, in some shop windows along Bellevue Avenue in West Vancouver. Um, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so let me just see. So that is, uh, so you can see it, um, it'll be on from today until August 31st um, in the windows of Crema, uh, Stitigen Jewelers, Oxygen Yoga, uh, Jones and Company Bespoke Framers, um, and Phoenix. So yes, if you're taking a walk, uh, go check it out. Uh, and, and they're for sale. Uh, you can also uh, go and vote. Uh, there's a People's Choice um, uh, for all of the paintings. So you can, if you can't make it out on the street, or if you're on the street and then want to go vote, uh, check out paintonthemountain.com. And you'll see all of the paintings by all 12 artists there. So you can vote for your favorite that way. Nice interactive way and a great way to see all the artwork. Um, and something else to mention is uh, that while these three amazing artists were part of it, uh, there was a whole bunch of people out painting on the mountain. So we're just going to give a, give a shout out to all those other great talented artists that we we couldn't fit everyone in today. <laughs> There'll be a lot of people talking. Uh, so everyone else uh, who was painting uh, on Paint on the Mountain, uh, we had Elizabeth Austin, Maureen Conley, Mo Gosh. Tatiana Mirkov Popoviki, Jan Pointer, Nigel Sutcliffe, Alfonso Tejada, Shannon Thiessen, and Ann Wilsey. So you'll be able to see all of their work uh, at paintonthemountain.com where you can vote and in the shops along Bellevue Avenue. Um, I think now we'll uh, get Taryn uh, back on uh, because there's another opportunity uh, that we have in West Vancouver uh, to see uh, some some plein air sketches. Hi everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for just including me in this, um, this event. Uh, and Stephen, we just had a question from an audience member about um, how to view uh, the images it, during this COVID time if we can't get out and walk around the neighborhood. I know we have a lot of people that are a little more isolated. So I'm just gonna share my screen um, to just show people exactly how to get to the website. Excellent. Yes, so just bear with me here. So I hope everyone, I'm gonna see if I can get my fancy dancy cursor, which I've never used before. Ooh, can you see my cursor? Yeah. Yes. Great, and you can see plain on the mountain, paint on the mountain, the screen? Yeah. Great. Yes. So everyone, if you go to cypressvillage.com, events slash POTM, Paint on the Mountain, um, you can also go to paintonthemountain.com. And you'll notice over in the right, it'll say vote for people's choice, but it also has, yes, I believe if we click on that and then click here to vote, you will see all of the paintings listed and you can, you can view them. So that is the easiest way if you aren't able to get out and about. And I'm just gonna shut that down. And um, just an aside, this gives me an opportunity to mention um, a few things going on at the library. We do have an art gallery a virtual exhibition on called Hand Drawn West Vancouver. It links slightly with the Plain Air um, initiative in the sense that Emma Fitzgerald, who uh, was the artist, she is a sketcher and did everything um, out, out of doors and um, in plain air, just not with oils or watercolors, but with um, just a pen and ink. So uh, on our art gallery page, you can see here, Hand Drawn West Vancouver. It's a little virtual flip book that you're welcome to visit and flip through. Emma is also commentating on all of the places she sketched in. And Emma's, um, she did a reading with us and you can view that on our YouTube page called Hand Drawn Vancouver. Um, and another shout out, we're recording today's event um, and both Stephen and I will be um, posting the video on both the Silk Purse uh, YouTube. Is that correct, Stephen? Or 
Uh, West Van Arts Council. Thank you. It will be also on the West Vancouver Memorial Library YouTube um, page. So you can share it with friends and family and it will be there for time immemorial <laughs> to watch again and again. So thank you for just letting me be part of this. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing all of that. Taryn, yeah. So I guess we're coming, uh, coming to a close. Uh, so thanks everyone uh, for showing up tonight uh, and sharing your, your words of wisdom and sharing your artwork with us. Uh, where can people uh, who are watching, where can they find more about you or more of your work? I'm on Instagram, Shirley Claire Williams, and also my website is shirleyclairewilliams.com. Maria? Yep, and my website is just my full name, mariajosenhans.com. And I also am on Instagram and Facebook, and there's links to... Um, to my Instagram and Facebook page on my, um, on my website as well. Uh, for me, you can go to Instagram. Uh, Surnur is my first name and uh, it'll pop up for sure, but you can uh, write my last name as well, which is S-E-M-B-H-I, Sambi. And that's my Instagram where I post my artworks. I also have a Behance, but I don't uh, post frequently there. But after like a couple of, uh, like, like a while, I do post my works over there as well. So yeah, uh, check them out. Great. Awesome, that's wonderful. Yeah, and go check out the Paint on the Mountain site like Taryn just showed you. Uh, vote for your, for your favorite. Uh, and if you are able, uh, check them out in person uh, along Bellevue on the Art Walk. That's uh, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, so thank you to all of our wonderful panelists and to British Pacific Properties and to everyone who helped put uh, this amazing uh, event together. Uh, it, was, it was pretty wonderful uh, to, to have this experience this evening with you all. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for hosting. Thank you so much. And thanks to British Pacific Properties for having this event, even though, you know, it was, they didn't have Harmony Arts and everything. It's still wonderful that they were able to get this together and, and uh, do, do this this way. It's really nice. Yeah, definitely. thank you all. Awesome. And thank you for everyone who showed up tonight to, to listen and to see, uh, see examples of this work. That's, uh, that's what art is here for is, is for, is for you guys. Yeah. So uh, thank you. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, please uh, stay safe and uh, stay creative and we will connect with you later. Take care, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.